to be honest, we're just so grateful that we're able to visit these places in their current state. As you know, tourism generally around the world is developing at such a fast rate that uh, these kind of places won't exist for much longer. leaving this tricky entrance now. After a pleasant three days at anchor, it's been really nice actually just chilling out, not doing not doing anything really, just taking in the view. It's a spectacular little anchorage, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, but as you remember, it's a very tight channel in, so I'm just following our track out, keeping an eye on the satellite as well. We're gonna check out a little anchorage just around the corner. And on the satellite image, you can see two big spits of sand if it weren't for those spits of sand, it might be quite exposed. It's right on the sort of southwest corner of the Anambas. There's a group of islands below that, but um, with these south southwesterlies, it's just going to be a bit unpleasant motoring into wind to get to those. So we're going to check out this place first. If this doesn't work, there's a couple of villages over there we thought we'd go and check out. After that, we thought we would make the most of the winds and sail right the way across the Anambas Islands over to an island on the east side, which we haven't been to. Um, but first of all, we've just got to get out of here. Going all right so far. So Liz's putting the anchor down. Nice little spot this. A bit more rolly perhaps, but um, look at this. This is Pula Samut South, as opposed to the northern one which we went to two years ago. It's two miles from where we were anchored this morning and it's very beautiful. Lots of sand, lots of beaches here, one over there, one over there. I'm going to go and have a look at those beaches to see if there are any turtles. I'm going to go uh, and check out a lagoon which is supposed to be here, but it depends which of the Google images you are actually using and uh, I'll try and show you but Jamie probably do an over, over, overlay. There's a spit that comes right out which is what's giving us quite a lot of shelter here, it's completely flat. Behind it you can see quite a few little um, wave breakers and white water and over here there's um, some choppy current and out there a little bit of a swell but there's this little patch here where it's lovely and flat but the spit is quite interesting because it goes either that way or that way depending on which satellite image you use and we think it depends on the season so at the moment the spit's coming towards us we reckon because it's the southwest that's so been pushed this way and then when the northeast comes in sand gets pushed the other way that's our theory anyway as always Whenever we uh, arrive somewhere, it's tradition on this boat to have a drink, it's usually beer, and just one moment. 9.30 a.m. Cheers! There's a track, in fact there are several tracks across the top here. Uh, one line in the middle and then feet marked. 
either side of it. I'm really hoping it's just a monitor lizard and not a sea crocodile. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, I'm walking next to what looks like a black tip reef shark. Little baby one. pretty remote here uh, as Liz says we've got some tracks made by some land creature like probably a monitor a small monitor I suspect I doubt it's sea crocodiles I think they'd leave a bigger trail but it's definitely something along those lines and uh, I've had this black tipped reef shark follow me and there's another school of fish these are swimming very close to shore here the uh, little shark was following me backwards and forwards as I walked up and down the beach. Aside from that, there isn't much here. Bit of plastic on the beach, of course. One thing that we always imagine, perhaps kind of perversely, is to imagine what these places would be like were they to establish them as tourist developments. We figured, number one, priority for any tourist developer would be a beach. It has to have a beach. So the previous angle of the tree we're in although it was rather stunningly beautiful. Didn't really have a beach to talk of. But uh, around here, we've got a number of beaches. So we've got this one I'm walking on now. Just over the other side there, to the east, another beach, there's another beach there. And because we've got these spits that protect us from that southerly swirl, there's obviously a lot of potential here for development. I think it's gonna be interesting to see how that pans out over the next 20, uh, 10, 20 years or so because I can see there is so much potential here. Obviously the main issue is uh, having some kind of connectivity with Tarempa, the capital, to get uh, foodstuffs and uh, what have you delivered to the resorts, but I'm sure that's something that they will address as well. To be honest, we're just so grateful that we're able to visit these places in their current state. I'm sure there are many places in the world that are still like this, um, but as you know, tourism generally around the world is developing at such a fast rate that uh, these kind of places won't exist for much longer. I thought this second trip to the Anambas was going to be a bit disappointing because I felt like we'd done the best bits, but of course there are many more bits. Uh, people we know who are currently here in the Anambas are doing all the stuff that we did last time. I think uh, these southern islands are, are less visited when you find a spot like this, you just want to kick back and relax for a week and do nothing except explore, snorkel. There you can see we've got cirrus clouds developing. That's the first time we've seen that for a while. 
could be a front coming through. I haven't checked the weather for a couple of days, so I should probably keep an eye on that. I think where we are now, we're probably quite safe. Uh, but um, we should at least download a forecast and just see if our next proposed anchorage, which is behind that island over there, is going to offer any kind of protection should the weather come through. Oh. Day two at Samut South. That's Samut over there. Esper anchored just over my shoulder. You can't see it because we've just come round to this spit which joins uh, the two islands, one of which we were anchored next to there and then the one that we're looking opposite here. And uh, if you look at the satellite image and maybe I'll get some drone footage as well, you can see this piece of uh, sand here uh, has the sea either side. It's got a sort of lagoon here and then the open water over there. No one around again. We're on this beautiful spit between the two islands, which seems to be uh, constantly above the water. Uh, lots of tracks again, bird tracks, as well as what we reckon are probably monitor lizard tracks. And there's a big hole in the ground here, uh, lots of tracks around it. And I'm just wondering if it may have been a turtle nest uh, and the monitors have dug it up or whether some of the little ones got away first. I'm not quite sure, it's difficult to really see the tracks, but there's a lot, lot going on around it. See that from, from there? Yeah. See so that's a line with either side and we saw these last time and we thought that could be baby turtle track but it's all mushed up now. Well, that was a nice little interlude this morning. Nice little uh, snorkel as well and two different beaches. Time to move on and we're going to be going to a little town now, a village, sort of in a channel. We're going to see what the uh, depth is like. No idea. It seems as if there's quite a few of those um, fish construction device things anchored in around the bay. So it should be interesting to see if there's enough depth and uh, see if there's anything ashore as well. It's um, half 12, one o'clock in the afternoon now, so we'll probably get there. We won't have time to explore and land today, but might do it tomorrow. There's supposed to be some heavy weather coming in as well, so it could be quite a good spot just to hunker down just for a day or two. But uh, in the meantime, this has been perfect anchorage. Can you explain who Tina is? Tina's over my left shoulder. It's a little island called Tina. And just south of Tina is Turner. But that's not true. Tina is true though. Pulau Tina. We're going about two nautical miles uh, this away and we're going to a village of no name. Uh, it's not on any ch oh, nobody's been there before as far as we can see. But we thought we'd check it out, go and have a look. So we're just approaching the uh, village now. It's quite a tight channel. There's two islands that almost join together and uh, we go through between the two of them. Happy to report actually that the satellite uh, data appears to correlate with the chart data or vice versa. So that was quite unusual for the Anambus. I think perhaps uh, Navionics took note when I sent them a message a couple of years ago about their charts being so out. It seems as if at the moment, uh, most of what we've seen, the charts are in accordance with the satellite data, but of course, we use this first. Very rugged here. Huge granite uh, boulders in among underneath the uh, plantations. We can see uh, a couple of plantations up on the hill there. I'm not sure what they are. 
and then of course uh, the usual uh, coconut palm and so on. But uh, it's quite dramatic. We've gone past the villages, carrying on over, we're going to do a circuit, see what we've got. i uh, seen one or two really nice looking anchorages so far, but at the moment, as I said earlier, lovely blue skies above us, but in front, nasty grey skies. Just let that get past us, and then we'll have a really good look, and uh, yeah, we'll find tonight's anchorage. Well, we had second thoughts about going to the village, and the main reason for that is the what we're calling the FADs, these big constructions you can see behind us that they take out to sea at night and that's one of the issues is that we don't really want to be anchoring too close to them uh, because they'll be coming, well they'll be leaving at uh, dusk and then they come in around about dawn time and um, well we've had an issue with them in the past in Anambas when uh, one of them dragged when a big squall hit us so we don't like to be too close to them. As friendly as they are there's no one on them during the day. They come out, uh, they get dropped off by boat and then they get towed out by boat and uh, catch lots of chummy chummy. But even though we've missed the village, we have to say this whole area is beautiful, isn't it, Elizabeth? Yeah, it's absolutely lovely. One of my favorite places to anchor is in channels and this would have been great, but there's far too many of them. Um, and also right in front of us, there's uh, quite a bit of uh, weather developing. Looks like we've got a little storm above Trempa, the island of Siantan, and that's when things start moving around and we don't really want to be close to too many of these uh, fishing platforms. We are here in the smaller of the two no-name villages. Uh, still haven't had good enough connection to get the name, but I'm hoping when we get Google Maps, I'll be able to find a name. It's quite busy, it's lots of banging and uh, sounds like saw or something going on. Children, a one little boat came past and waved as we arrived. A small village at the other end, uh, it, the creek finishes and there's uh, there's some beautiful mangrove on either side, which is always a good sign, good healthy area. Let's see what the place has to offer. <laughs> 